What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the long range meta. Obviously I'm not at my normal setup. I'm home for the holidays to see my family, uh, but I brought all my stuff with me. So I'm gonna make a few videos while I'm here and this is one of them. So today we're gonna be doing the long range meta. Like I said, Metagen is pretty much finished. We just have to get it working in the apps. For some reason it kind of bugs out in the apps still, but it works on the website. It's not live yet, but it should be in the next day or so. So today I'm gonna be going over uh, what it spits out for the long range meta. If you're new here and you don't know what Metagen is, Basically, it's a giant AI optimization tool that I built that will look at all the attachments in the game, all the weapons in the game, and spit out the best possible builds for how you like to play. So this is how it works. Um, you can set up run title description for your, your calculation. Uh, select the type of weapon that you're building. Right now, we only have aggressive close range and long range automatic. Um, you can do trios or quads currently. We're going to expand this hopefully in the future to do long range semi-autos, snipers, sniper support, all the different you know, types of weapons that you would want to build. Uh, but for now, it's just these two. And then squad sizes also want to add solos and duos, but I've had a lot of trouble with getting that to work, actually, so that's why it's not there yet. Um, you can force weapon suppression, so that means that every build that it spits out will have a suppressor. It's still going to pick the best suppressor, but it just makes it so all your weapons are suppressed. So that is defaulted to on now because in Warzone 3, it's much more necessary because you actually show up on the minimap again when you shoot an unsuppressed weapon. So suppression is very important now. Reserve a slot for optic. This is only a choice for close range. So if you reserve a slot for optic, it's going to basically just do builds with four attachments only and leave a slot open for the optic. Uh, you can turn that off if you want iron sight builds. Uh, laser visibility. So this is the option for whether or not you care if your laser is visible in different scenarios. So some lasers turn on when you ADS, some lasers turn off when you ADS and are only visible when you're just running around in hip fire. Um, so you can toggle these on and off and it will basically block those from being spit out in the final results. And then the big one is customizing the importance. So down at the bottom, you can turn this on and for all the different stats, ADS time, aim sway, bullet velocity, time to kill, damage per second, all these different things, you can weight these how much you think they should be compared to my default values. So basically when you leave these in the center, it spits out what I think is the meta currently because I'm the one that trained it. But if you are someone, a good example would be maybe you're a controller player who just feels like you, you have a hard time controlling vertical recoil because it just really messes with your aim. You come down here and you could say that vertical recoil is more important to you. And then you could just run it and it would output the results for you as an individual. So today we're going to talk about the long range meta, like I said. So I'm going to run it on long range automatic. We're going to do quads, force weapon suppression, and then I'm going to leave everything else default. So these are all going to be default. And then we are just going to click find my meta and it will run. You can see it says gathering data up in the top because there's so many weapons and so many attachments in this game. It can take a little while to run. Uh, this is a huge calculation, um, but you know, the output is, is really worth it. It gives you the best build for every weapon in the game for that type of uh, that weapon type that you selected. All right, so the run finished for long range automatic. I can just click the results tab at the top or I can click on the banner and go to the results page. On Metagen, like I said, this is not quite live yet, but hopefully in the next couple days it will be. Um, so then you can scroll down and you can see the output. And you can see DG58 LSW came out in first place with a score of 10. And I just I want to clarify that Metagen is not perfect. I trained it, so it was it's manually set up to kind of output how I think. So the guns that it outputs are going to be kind of like what I believe are meta. And then as you tune it yourself off of how it, the default values are, that's going to be customized for you. So it's not perfect. Um, but it is very good and it will give you a very good idea of the meta immediately uh, when you come in here and run the default values or your your custom tuned values. So first place, DG58 LSW. Second place, TAC Eradicator, Pulam Yacht in third, Bruin in fourth, and then the MTZ762 in fifth. So basically anything over like a 9.5 is going to be very, very meta. Anything over 9.5 is excellent. Uh, anything over like a 9 is going to be very good, but maybe not quite meta. Um, so you can see that M13 sneaks in above nine, Holger 26 sneaks in above nine as well. But our top five here uh, are very, very good. All right, so I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna add them to the comparison. So you can just click this little plus button and it will add each one of these builds to your current comparison on TGD. And then you can go look at them on TTK charts and other comparison stats. All right, I've got those top five and I also added the M13 because a lot of people have been saying the M13 is very meta. So I've added those to the TTK chart here. This is with the full builds too, so it takes all the attachments from the Metagen build and attaches them in the comparison tool as well. So we've got all the attachments on these. Uh, and if you look at just chest, the DG58 in red doesn't look so good. It looks much slower than everything except the M13 at all ranges. 
But if you change the combination, uh, you can see that it drops down significantly into being basically tied with everything at all ranges. So it's one of the fastest at all ranges when you put it on combination. Uh, and that's because combination, in this case, basically accounts for a headshot. So we're going to scroll up and we're going to look at the STK tool. So this is the DG58 STK calculator. Basically, this tells you when you miss a certain shot location, how likely you are to change the time to kill off of that shot location. So you can see that this has 33 damage at all, uh, all shot locations below the chest. So chest, stomach, legs, and arms. Uh, they are all 33 damage. And then you can see that it only takes one neck shot or one head shot to reduce that time to kill down to 680 milliseconds. So it's one of those guns where one head shot instantly reduces that time to kill, which is, seems to be what ends up being meta most of the time is those weapons. Uh, and then in the second ra damage range, there's only two damage drop-offs, so 0 to 34 and then 34+. plus. Same story here, one headshot, and you reduce the time to kill. It takes five next shots, so next shot was slightly different than uh, the rest of the body, but next, the next region is so small that you're usually going to get a, a headshot instead of a next shot. So you can see that with one headshot, you do 301 damage, with nine body shots. So again, it only takes one headshot to reduce that time to kill. Stack Eradicator in orange here actually has the fastest time to kill out to its last drop off, which is at 77 meters with this build. But that's with the increased fire rate for the first seven or eight shots. So the Tack Eradicator actually shoots really fast to start with and then kind of tapers off down to a steady state value for the rest of the time. Um, so the TTK actually incorporates that and it's assuming that you hit all of those first shots. So this TTK in practice is probably a little slower than this. Uh, this is, that's just because it inclu includes those fast first few shots. The Bruin and the, the Pulamyat are both very, very similar. Basically, the Bruin has shorter damage range. So you can see green here drops off at 30 meters, and then the Pulamyat drops off at 40 meters. So uh, they're very similar. They both perform very well. The Bruin, the benefit of the Bruin is you can get that 60 round mag, so it feels more like an AR. It is a pretty good choice. Like I said, I think all of these top five weapons are, are very meta options, um, kind of interchangeable. Another one I want to talk about is the MTZ 7.62. So this only has a 30 round mag, um, but it has very easy to control recoil, good bullet velocity, and phenomenal time to kill. Um, it has the fastest time to kill from 43 up to 60 meters, which is an extremely important damage range. That's probably in, in Warzone, that's probably where a huge portion of the engagements happen for your long range weapon. I'd say like 25 up to 60 is the, the biggest range uh, for those engagements for long range. So I think that the MTZ 7.62 probably feels like it melts people in a lot of cases compared to these other weapons. The only thing that holds it back is that 30 round mag, uh, but it has a pretty quick reload time. And I think that it could still be one of the absolute best. And obviously Metagen agrees. I think it's a great weapon, even for trios and quads. A lot of people saying you can't use it in those because of the small mag. I don't really agree. I think that you can get reloads off quickly and it does enough damage that those bullets hit hard enough that 30 bullets in a lot of cases will be plenty. All right, I want to mention the MTZ Interceptor as well. If you guys have been playing, you know this is the Marksman rifle that just hits ridiculously hard and has since it released. So they tried to nerf it. They nerfed it down to 142 headshot damage and 142 neck shot damage in the first range. Uh, it used to do like 190. And then in all ranges, it basically just got that same headshot nerf where it used to do between 170 and 190 damage to the head. Now it does between 120 and 140, which is still a massive amount. So if you look at the actual shots to kill calculator, you can see that in the first range, it only takes one headshot to reduce the time to kill. Second range, still only takes one headshot to reduce the time to kill. Third range, only one. And then last range, it actually does take two headshots now to reduce the time to kill. Um, so this gun is still insanely good. So they've tried to nerf it, and it just... It's still really good. It's hard to use, but it's still definitely a meta choice for, you know, very strong, very good players. So you can see the first range, it just kind of beats everything. It's that purple line. Uh, and then the, out at longer ranges, uh, it can actually start to lose to some of the other automatic weapons, but it's still an excellent, excellent weapon. Definitely still a meta weapon. One other thing I've talked about a bunch in previous long range meta videos is the true TTK simulation on TGD. So the best way to use that is basically take those top five weapons that Metagen spits out for your specific weightings and then actually build them out in game. And if you run up to the front and run back here, it will show you an accuracy in the top left of the screen. You can see your accuracy is up there. Set it on three plates so they have more health. And then basically just come back here and you can kind of like strafe, just kind of play how you would normally play. My game's running awful, so my accuracy is going to be terrible, but that's just because I'm on this laptop. Um, so basically just get your accuracy here. And once you get that, 
you can actually pull that accuracy out. So it says 20.83% there. Just fire until you actually take the dummy down. I'm not going to right now because my game's literally running at like 15 FPS, so I can't hit anything. Uh, but you would get that accuracy number after like 10 trials on that target. And then you can come to TGD. Let me pull it back up. So this is the true TTK simulator in the sidebar of TGD. So I've got those, those five builds uh, from the top weapons and I can input those accuracies from the firing range for shooting that last target. So it's specifically tuned for shooting the last target. You can't do it with the middle target or the front target. Basically, it will take your accuracy that you got and kind of simulate and estimate what your accuracy would be at all ranges from zero up to 100 meters. And then it gives you a real realistic TTK for you specifically for that weapon. So if I put in some just trial numbers here, so I'm just gonna pick random numbers. Um, Say I'm really accurate with the Bruin, 55%. MTZ, I'm also really accurate with, 54%, 53%. M13, not as much. So I'll just put those in, and then I click Simulate. I'm on mouse and key. So if I simulate that, if I come down here, it's going to spit out a real realistic TTK chart with simulated accuracies at all ranges, which is super powerful. This is really the best tool for people to find their meta, even better than Metagen but it's the combination of the two tools that's really powerful because Metagen can give you the builds really fast that you'll like to use, and then you can test those yourself if you want to take the time to do that, put them into this, and you will get real TTKs. So you can see in this case, um, from 20 out to about 60 meters, the yellow MTZ762 won for me with these percentages and then past that green one, which was the Bruin Mark IX. And then another cool thing down here is this engagement probability by distance. So this is basically weighting every point on that, that TTK chart by the value, the Y value on this chart. And then that will spit out just across that value what the best TTK is. So you can see the weighted TTKs using this weighting system. Uh, MTZ762 came out first place for me with these input accuracies. And you can customize this too. So if you want to actually change how this graph works, you can, you know, you can make the mean move down a little bit. You can make the standard deviation much tighter. If you want to look at specifically weapons that are good around like 35 meters, you'd set the mean to 35, set the standard deviation to like 10, and then you have a really tightly weighted around that, that distance uh, probability curve, and you can get those TTKs out of it. So this is a super, super powerful tool in combination with Metagen. This really just does what the point of TGD is, which is find your meta. That's our new slogan. That is the whole point of the website. You don't want to just find somebody else's meta that made a YouTube video. You want to find what's best for you, find your meta, and that's what the combination of these two tools uh, can really do for you. All right, everyone. Well, obviously, you can see the top builds here, so I don't really need to go over that. I'm sure the people that just wanted builds and just wanted to leave the video after the builds have already done that. Um, but if you're still here, I appreciate you. Metagen, like I said, is not quite released yet. Hopefully in the next day or two. The reason it's not is just because it wasn't working on apps. It was working, it's working fine on the website, um, but we had to pull it back down because it's not working on the apps yet. And also, if you don't know, we have apps. So iOS, Android native apps are available now for TGD. Um, Metagen should be out soon. Everything else is already released. Direct subscriptions are always the best way to support all this work that we put into this. I mean, I've spent literal hundreds of hours already since the game released testing the damage values and getting all this live on TGD. Um, yeah, subscriptions are always the, the best way to directly support, but I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.